Is this a canal or is this a cloud? <laughs> if dogs could talk. Thank you. I, I didn't know you used those tissues. I, I, I thought you preferred a more delicate one. Yeah, no. I like these big ones now. I don't know why. I've never liked cheap tissues, as you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just the same. <laughs> Do you know what I feel above all else? I feel silly. It, it, it was nothing more than a friendship. It was more than a friendship, Norris. Engagement aside, yes. And a little bit of grief. You see, look, that, that, that's only natural. Something's come to an abrupt and painful end. <laughs> Shall we go down and open up again? You're going nowhere. Just gonna sit here all afternoon with your feet up. Stewing, you mean? Allowing myself to feel pity and anger and resentment. I mean, you you, you weren't to know he had such a disappointing past. <laughs> oh, Rita. <laughs> you silly, silly old. Woman. <laughs> Riley! Riley! Shall I get it? Better add. Hey, be all right, Mum. Promise? Go on. <clears throat> I've tried to stay calm about this, but I can't. I bet you can't. Because all these years I've blamed myself. Thinking if I hadn't been such a tramp. I didn't mean the stuff I said, Paula. It was unkind. I, I was in shock. Shock? Tell you what shock is, Eileen. Sitting in a hospital bed in Blackburn in 1977 with a screaming baby in your lap. Everybody else surrounded with balloons. Nobody bought me a balloon, Eileen. I'm so sorry. The year before, I had braces on my teeth. Do you remember that? I do. The pain I went through. The shame. Revulsion. Do you remember me, Auntie Barbara? She never spoke to me again. Well, she was a hard-faced cow, mind. I could have opened a window and flung myself in car park. If I hadn't been on ground floor, I might have done. Oh, clueless, Eileen. Oh, no. We, we were children. We were children. <laughs> Steve, this lad's been saying stuff about our Amy again. What shall I do? No, I will not let it lie. Well, shall I say something to his mother? No, we're waiting for him to come out now. He's got a doctor, a lunchbox and a Spider-Man jacket. Hey, it's not him, is it? No, it's not him. Well, I've got to do something. Do you know what? Forget it. Forget it, I'll start then. This reminds me of student days. Leeds. I shared a flat with a girl called Prue. <laughs> well, I lived at home. I missed out on all that. Sunday afternoon. Don't want to hear any stories about boys, if that's what you're about to launch into. <laughs> We'd be here all day. <laughs> Things weren't just possible then. They were probable. That's right. Youthful naivety. Before you know where you are, it's free bus pass time. I don't want a free bus pass. You ride a bike. <laughs> I used to be sexy. You still are. Very. <laughs> I still have the capacity for fun and good conversation. You did what you wanted. You were brave enough. 
before it's too late, do you mean? Not at all. You're still at the start of a new adventure. Am I? What a horrible thought for it to be too late. For what? For anything. Life is long and rich, Ken. We must savour it to the very last minute. life always be like this. Why can't it? Well, why did it have to be so packed full of compromise? <sighs> My husband did what you're doing and I hated him for it. Unfortunately, I love you. Is it? Unfortunate. Hmm? I don't want your wife to get hurt. She won't find out. She should know. Do you want to be with me? Yes. Then why not tell her the truth? That you are in love with someone else. <laughs> Oh, oh, blanching the cronies the other day. Yeah, arguing about who was the poorest when they were kids. Blanche claimed that she only had one toy when she was little, right? A doll. And before she had it, a cousin had it. And before a cousin had it, you know, etc., etc. Yeah, just like my dad, that is. So tell her what that other woman said. This other woman reckons my mother was spoiled because the only toy she had when she was growing up was a button. <laughs> <laughs> one button! Oh, it was a tiddlywink, a monocle, you name it. Go on, tell her what the other woman said. Oh, and then this other woman says, You had a button, you didn't know you were born. <laughs> Ah! Oh, anyway. <laughs> hey, is Blanche going to be there tonight? We're going round for his tea later, me inside. No, she's going out, thank God. <laughs> oh. So there's a, there's a place going begging at the table, is there? What? Would you like to come for your tea, Michelle? Jeez, we look, no, I, I was joking. Don't don't put her on the spot like that. You what? He's embarrassed. I can't have tea with a mate and his family, can't I? Oh, of course you can, love. I feel about 12 now. <laughs> am, I, uh, am I blushing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will I see you tomorrow? I don't know is the honest answer to that. I'm leaving tomorrow. An inspector calls in Tamworth. I'm playing Mrs. Burling. That's the snobby one. We start rehearsals on Tuesday. And then I'm visiting some friends in Little Venice. They've got some very pretty restaurants there. And then I'm going to the Norfolk Broads for a few months. Reading, relaxing, some more friends. I don't want these afternoons to ever end. Neither do I. I'll be gone by four. If you want the things you say you want from life, you'll be with me. looks mainly and I liked it I used to look forward to coming round in case he were there and then I looked at him just so he knew and then one day you and me were in your room and I went downstairs and you were coming upstairs and that's how it started when did your mum die 
1992. I only saw once before we moved away, after it all came out. Never said a word to me. She kept her head up. But she wouldn't look me in the eye. She died miserable. You should know that. She went off me and... I never knew why. It was me she hated. How she kept her nerve and hid this from me, I'll never know. I thought I didn't love her. Right now I do. I didn't know. I'd no idea I was wrecking anybody's life, Eileen. Not your mother's. Not mine. Not yours. So he took you for drives and things? And things. How long did it go on? Weeks. Months. I've... All I know, it's, it, was, it was exciting. And then one day, you and me were on our way to school and I threw up in a hedge in Laycock Drive. Suddenly seemed like yesterday. Do you remember when we used to do Don't Go Breaking My Heart? Messing around, do you remember that? Yeah, it was around that time. And even now, to this day, that song comes on radio when I'm driving, I can't see. Can't see for crying. Kiki D. <laughs> Colin Grimshaw. Life. As, as I understand it, Rita said everything she needed to say to you last night, so maybe you should just go back to where you came from. Where I came from? It's all right, Norris. You can give us a minute. I don't want to give you a minute. In the back. <sighs> honestly. Never mind honestly. He's right. Rita, last night was difficult for everyone. And things were going so beautifully. Look, anyone can hide anything. You, you deceived her. Norris. You deceived everybody. In the back. <laughs> it's like having Rumpelstiltskin selling sweets. You can have this back, Colin. Take it away from me. I committed an indiscretion many, many years ago. You're committing one now. It was rash, it was reckless, it was born of vanity, boredom, lust. But I'm begging you not to abandon me. You don't want to live the rest of your life without me, do you, my darling? Please leave me alone. I might be your last chance for happiness, for laughter, for company. I'll get my laughs elsewhere, thank you. And I don't do so bad for company, despite what I say about you. Leave me alone, please. Make things a little bit easier, just leave me be. I'm the same man you fell in love with. No, that's not the case. It's very much the case. Look at me. The very same man. It's a great, great pity. Leave me be. Duh. 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 Oh, right. Duh. D. OK. D. Nope. Sorry. Nope. There's his head. Nope. Q. Q? <laughs> Q? No. Well, there's no. no need to say it like that. Mm, M? M. Ah. Nope. Oh. <laughs> oh, here's Grandad. How you can? Hey, hiya. Hey, you've missed your tea. Oh, it's all right. Now warm yourself up. 
we're just playing hangman, but there is the distinct feeling that Peter is cheating. No, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. Peter, is it Beethoven's fifth in C minor? <laughs> Everyone liked me. Everyone liked me, and then boom. I might be identified by one mistake, a mistake I made so long ago. You abused an underage girl. You're that person. Well, you make it sound very different from how it actually was. I was much, much younger for a start. You were 38, Dad. And that girl. All lipstick and confidence. Well, you know what she looked like. That girl. Her name's Paula. She knew what she was doing. How could she know what she was doing, putting herself in that position? She had a woman's body and a woman's mind. I don't think either of us could have helped it. Well, maybe she couldn't, Dad. But you could. Responsibility. Restraint. It was foolish. So, so foolish. You destroyed two families. And whether you like the term or not, however newfangled it might all seem to you, what you did with Paula was abuse. In fact, what you did with her was rape. Is that what you call it? When a young woman asks you to pick her up from a nightclub at one o'clock in the morning? Is that abuse? It is, when she's 14 years old! It was nothing of the sort, Eileen. Ill judged, yes, but it was not abuse, it was not rape. I'll tell you what they call it these days. They call it a midlife crisis. Here was a young woman who wanted me, unlike your mother. Don't you dare. Because I know what it feels like to be my mother's age. And 30-odd years later, there's a grown-up daughter, another daughter, who is mine. Well, how do you think I feel? Is anybody thinking about me? I will not excuse what you did. Not because time's passed or the words have changed. I blame my mother for everything, and she never said a word. And she protected you. And she protected me. And she protected Paula Carp. And when she died, she let you get away with it all. Well, I'm not so sure you should. The look in your eye is punishment enough. The look in my eye isn't punishment at all, Dad. Eileen. Could I have a glass of water? Ah, ah. I'm not eating very well. Oh. Can't use it all. So, what did you get up to anyway? No. This afternoon, uh, not much. Walking. Well, how can it not have an A or an O in the middle? It's only three letters. I know. I think you're cheating. Mum! <laughs> What's happened? It's your granddad. I think he's had a stroke. Well, you're not going with him? No. Eileen. Wish I got a pound for every time I've come out here and contemplated the universe. Which is how I used to think of it when I was younger. Nice stew, Deirdre did earlier, eh? Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Considering where you've been. I've been walking. You'll be contemplating a disaster, if you're not careful. Never mind the universe.
Mom. What? Come on in, eh? Made you a brew. Do you want me to phone the hospital? Do what you like, love. Mum, it's chilly out here. Thought I knew everything, Jace. I know nothing. Join the club. I think that I, I, I was a woman. In fact, I'm sure I was. Boy Meets Girl is next. <laughs>